20. That's how many people have been murdered this year in St. Paul. And police say the latest victim was leaving Bible study with his young daughter and his dad when he was shot and killed. It happened in the Summit University neighborhood right outside of a church. Kaya is live at police headquarters. And Kaya, this is the sixth homicide to happen in just over two weeks, right? Good morning and police just updated us overnight saying the family was with a group of people leaving church. It was around 830 yesterday evening. That group was leaving when suddenly shots were fired. We're told the victim ran off and then his dad called 911. The dad, police say, also drew a handgun and returned fire in an effort to protect everybody. But it does not appear that he shot anyone. Now, when police arrived, they found a trail of blood leading to the victim in an alley behind a church. Medics, they tried to save him, but he died on scene. Police have not named a specific church. However, based on the location they provided, looks like this happened near St. Albans Church of God. It's incomprehensible to think that someone would shoot into a group of people leaving a church in a neighborhood. Uh, it just makes absolutely no sense to any of us. Police say the dad is legally allowed to carry the gun that he used. As for the suspect or suspects, police say they extensively searched the area surrounding the church, but they didn't find anyone. And so no arrests have been made. But again, as we often hear with these homicide investigations, they're asking anyone with information to contact them. Yeah, worrisome situation there. Thanks a lot for the update, Kaya. Yeah, St. Paul Police on pace for the most homicides in a decade, but the Twin Cities still remains less violent than other major U.S. cities. St. Paul's murder rate per 100,000 population over five years is about 5.7. That is lower than Minneapolis's 8.8 .8 and much lower than Milwaukee's 19.1, Chicago's 21.7 or St. Louis's 60.8. Breaking just into the newsroom, take a look at the flooding in southeast Texas. A flash flood emergency has been declared there. It's all because of tropical depression Imelda. It's turning streets into rivers, making it nearly impossible for cars to pass through. Within the last hour, we learned more than 1,000 people have been have called 911 to be rescued. And check this out. This is from our sister station in Beaumont, Texas. They had to end their coverage and evacuate their building overnight because of flooding. Sven, you've been taking a look and tracking this system. What's in store for the people down there? Yeah, it just continues to rain intensely, uh, mostly just east of the Houston area. Uh, Imelda making very slow progress. But we have these bands of training thunderstorms on the south end of the center. And take a look at these estimates from radar around the Houston area, anywhere from three to six inches of rain, which is enough. But along the coastal areas yesterday, those heavy bands were the south. They picked up over a foot of rain and look at this large area just around the Beaumont area of possibly uh, up to 19 inches of rain. That's almost a foot and a half of water uh, that has fallen so far in the last 48 hours, and it will continue to rain there through the day today. Here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A boy is recovering after being hit by a light rail train. Metro Transit says it happened at the Victoria station of the Green Line just before six last night. The boy had just gotten off the train. We don't know how old he is or how badly he was hurt, just that his injuries are not life threatening. Don't leave your purse in your car. That's a warning from Elk River Police this morning. They say there's a group of people scoping out women who leave their purses in their cars and then breaking in and stealing them. It's happening at parks, business complexes, gyms, churches, and shopping centers. Mayor Jacob Fry is leading the way on an initiative to end cash bail in Minneapolis for suspects who are being held in jail just waiting for the next court appearance. It costs $100. $44 per day per person to house them in jail, let alone the human toll of sitting in jail because you can't raise the cash. That it's $150 that separates people from their families, from their jobs. The alternative to cash bail, getting social workers involved to help people get to the next court date because people do better when they're working between court dates rather than sitting in a cell. Looking for some extra cash? FedEx is now hiring for the holidays. There will be more than 2,000 jobs available in St. Paul. Those new hires will be part of the more than 55,000 seasonal positions that need to be filled nationwide. And that's your Thursday morning rush. Chris, thank you. The brutal beatings and robberies all caught on camera in downtown Minneapolis has hundreds of you talking online. 
in our digital dive this morning. The man you see being attacked here is sharing his story. Brendan O'Brien was calling an Uber at around 4 a.m. on the corner of 5th and Hennepin in downtown Minneapolis. That's when a group of people started chatting with him and one of the guys actually grabbed his wallet. And like anyone else, Brendan tried to get his wallet back. The group then started beating him with a final kick to the head that knocked him unconscious. It sucks that for, you know, like 80 bucks that they did that, you know. I, I could lose my wallet, I can lose my phone, I can lose my keys, that doesn't matter, I just want my brain back. He's doing better there, but a month later, Brennan says the effects of the concussion leave him unable to drive, unable to carry long conversations, and unable to work. 18 people have been charged for this robbery and another similar one. Brennan has a GoFundMe page set up to help with his recovery. We do have a link to that at care11.com. As I mentioned, hundreds of you guys are just talking about Brennan, the scary violence that's taken place in downtown Minneapolis. Here is what some of you are saying this morning. Dana tells us that she too is recovering from a traumatic brain injury and that it takes a long time to recover. And Linda here asking where are these kids' parents, grandparents, or whomever is in charge. We had a lot of comments like Linda's there. And then Sam saying there needs to be more police officers in the downtown area, which is exactly what Brendan says would help curb violence in downtown Minneapolis. He actually doesn't think he would have been beaten up and robbed you guys if uh, there were more police presence in downtown. Oh. Mm, that would help for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's so vicious. And when you watch it, you're just, you, it's cringeworthy because you're like, oh my God, you feel for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. he actually didn't see the video of the beating that's been going viral yeah. uh, until this weekend. Uh, I wouldn't want to watch that if yeah, I was him. Yeah, not, I don't yeah. want to watch that. All right, Sven, let's go to you now with One Thing Weather. Yeah, I'm looking at a beautiful day today. Uh, no downpours here. We got some clouds to start, but those are moving out following some thunderstorms in southeastern Minnesota. 82 the high today. Normal high temperature for early August. And one thing, uh, traffic this morning, 35E at Grand Avenue, where traffic is moving along this morning. Uh, no crashes again, and drive times are looking average. We have a story you need to hear. Scientists linking tap water to more than 100,000 cancer cases, what they found in the water, and how you can get rid of it. And today, uh, an announcement about insulin and making it more affordable for Minnesotans. I'll tell you about the proposal happening at the Capitol. And it was something her and her late husband spent eight years building. Now that he's gone, she's passing their passion along to a new generation of future flyers.